Our next guest says you'd better not be investing in China with his money. Safanad, chief investment strategist and honorary professor at the Chinese Academy of Sciences, John Rutledge, joins us now. I, I was going to be sarcastic here and say, John, you see nothing but clear skies and butterflies in China, but it is quite the opposite here. I've not heard you quite as down. You say it's just not investable right now. It's really not. You know, well, this is the slow economist on fast money, so I won't, <laughs> I won't have trading tips for you. But, Tyler, the problem is that the headlines are all about the economy. 5.2% growth sounds pretty good. Last year was three, but it's really just the rebound from COVID. So that's not the real issue, though. There are structural problems, debt, uh, real estate problems, et cetera, everybody knows about. But the real problem is that it's a place that exists under one-man rule. If you want to know the big risk of investing in China, ask Jack Ma. <laughs> I know Jack since he started Alibaba. And this guy can wake up one morning, have a brain cramp, and whatever you own there means nothing. We've got to remember, when you own a stock or a direct investment, the duration of that investment is roughly 35 years. Do you think you can see 35 years into the future with Mr. Xi Jinping's China? No, ab absolutely not. Uh, it speaks not only to the in investability of, of, of Chinese stocks or ETFs that do business there, but doesn't it speak as well to the viability of American businesses or Western businesses uh, that are doing business there, either as a market or as a manufacturing center? If you're saying that the, the, that the, that the equity business is subject to one-man rule, um, certainly foreign direct investment into plants uh, and into markets there is in jeopardy. Absolutely. Well, Tyler, the, the punchline here is that the new national security law means it's not safe for an expat to be in China. You can be arrested. You could be denied exit from the country at the will of the, of the government. It's just not a safe place to be. Now, if I put on my board of directors hat, of which I am on a bunch of boards, uh, and I think, well, let's say I've already got in investments in China. It's a huge market that's very seductive, but it's not one to take the bite of. The, uh, uh, you have to maintain your existing investments or else they, they fall apart. But you don't have to do it aggressively and you don't have to do new projects. So this last year, China lost $100 billion of FDI. And uh, they're going to keep losing as long as this continues in this way. The decoupling so is one problem. An American company, Xi Jinping you're saying, is another. I'm hearing you say, if you're advising an American company, you're saying, if you're there, do not up your capital investment there, and in fact, do the minimum amount of maintenance that you need to do to maintain right. your position. Which is the only safe way to reduce your capital position in China. Otherwise, you can you can sell it at a deep discount to a, to a local, but. Uh, uh, it, 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 it's probably if you do that too aggressively and if you do it too openly, the government will punish you for it. So yeah. you've got to keep saying the right things in China, but not extending yourself any more than you, than you already are. Well, I don't know what Apple's doing, but they seem to say the right things. Guy, jump No, in. they do. Mr. Rutledge, put your geopolitical hat on real quick. In early December, President Xi was here. I think three weeks later, we learned that he told President Biden that by any means necessary, we will take Taiwan, I'm paraphrasing, to a point. So my question to you is, does the weakness in the Chinese economy make it more or less likely that they were to do something there? Well, I think, as I remember, TSM's earnings are out tomorrow, which is relevant to this, conver this conversation. Uh, yeah, Taiwan, uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen? The problem is, in a normal government, in a normal country, there are a lot of people involved in making decisions. So the average of 100 people looks like a normal distribution. So the average of one person looks like one guy. And, that's a, and so he can wake up tomorrow morning and do something aggressive. Now, the recent trouble they've had in the military with corruption, you know, using rocket fuel to, to make hot pots and so forth, uh, is going gonna, is gonna to make him not want to take that bet or take that chance. But they're very sophisticated information warriors, as are the Russians. So you're going to see a lot about that coming up during this election year, because they're going to think the more they can scare people here in America, the more they can push the uh, they can push the results of the election.